on chasing Dallas. So I invited Eric out to dinner just to talk and clear the air. You put your own foot in your mouth with you, when it comes to everybody you have a problem with. Trey, as a black LGBTQ man, you have the nerve to call someone else a bufanda. So I went ahead and invited Trey Howard to come out to backyard. Cause listen, I haven't seen him since the event. He did invite me. Oh, you just the downfall of the relationship. It's just like the end all be all. Are you done? Are you done with Reese? Well, I've been going through a lot. You already know about one part, but the other part is, mm -hmm. the guy that we thought was the landlord of our building was not the landlord of our building. I may have lost a lot of money. I may have lost a spot that I thought was gonna be my forever spot. The next spot is gonna be bigger and better. How you feeling, 21? 21, 22 now? 22, okay. Spend another birthday with her, another day with her is a, is a blessing, so. Yeah. Hey, you say Dre Simmer and this motherfucker, like when they drop the teasers for the motherfucking retreat, everybody know my damn voice without seeing my damn face, girl. What is your team, girl? Do, do we need to replay whole last season? Oh. I did oh. a fool with you. Yeah, you are oh, a Last year, you were actually, 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 we made up. It's because of George. But he shut the honestly, fuck up. Shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Let them talk. Dior. Your ass don't even know what happened last season, so shut the fuck up. Your children is not here. Who are you talking to, my love? Trey, you, you, know, cry, can I speak? you can I speak? Can you speak? cried to can be I here. I applied to be here. You don't you have to work, work a you nine to five. I have to say that I don't be a I don't work a motherfucker. Trey Simmons, shut the fuck up! Unless you're gonna cash at me the money for this room, Girl, shut ain't up! Nobody, ain't I'm nobody gonna bring gonna it tear this bitch up. You talk the hard. Y'all all can suck my dick, yeah. bitch. It ain't nothing but space. Love both of y'all. Happily yeah. and carefully, yeah. bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. bitch. Yeah. Don't yeah. tease. Yeah. Don't tease, yeah. bitch. Yeah. Don't tease, bitch. Where those numbers up, bitch? We can take it outside, ho. Bye, sis. Bye, bitch. Bye, bitch. You carry that like the dumb bitch you are. security, you want? Yeah. Yeah, hey, I need a bag. I need a bag. bag. I need a bag. Man, give me that bag. Bags under my eyes. Under my what? And I'm chasing that bag. I'm chasing it. Put it on my mama. Put it on my mama. Put it on my dad. On my dad. Man, I'm packing my bags. Pack it up. I'm gonna get that bag. I'm gonna get that hey, bag. I need a bag. bag. I need a bag. bag. I need a bag. Bags under my eyes. Under my eyes. Cause I'm chasing that bag. I'm chasing it, chasing Put it on my mama. Put it on my mama. Put it on my dad. Man, on my dad. Man, I'm packing my bags. Packing it up. I'm gonna get that bag. Bag. Yeah. Okay, so that clearly did not go the way I wanted it to go. Or Trey, I know you're feeling something, which is that's okay. Listen, I'm telling you, it's like Zen Wen. It's Zen Kale. <laughs> <laughs> I am so tired of all this argument and fighting and Dre Stemmer, they pulling Dre Stemmer out, trading them going back and forth, and I'm still like, what are we doing? Why are we still arguing and like doing all the most trying to fight every goddamn time? I am so sick of these old ass men coming in here, nagging, complaining, coughing, chewing gum, everything under the sun, annoying the hell out of me. Everybody just chaos. I feel like Reese, Markel, and George should just have a three-way because literally they are always in the bed together arguing and talking. Like, I can't get over the, the nonsense with this group. So, uh, we had a conversation earlier about us like finally taking a trip somewhere. I thought I'd be as a plus one. Uh-uh. Who's inviting you as a plus one? George! No, bye. George, George, George. George. Who is your, who's your plus one? Is he your friend? Well, I don't know if we're going to have a plus one. You can't ask me that. <laughs> I, am a, I am a socialist by yeah. nature. That's how recent that is. What's the what's the on? I'm in, 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 what can I apologize to you about that will make us good? Nothing, because they're all lies. Okay, I, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm trying to be respectful to whatever the problem is. There's no problem. Sweet. To apologize to you, okay. so we can be cool. Because all we want to be doing is. It's just defeat the purpose, right? It but does. let's just be clear and put it on record. You and I would never be friends. Why? When I, because Why? I just don't dig with your type. What does dig my type mean? Your energy is bad. Are you, you sure? Uh, Hey, you're not as good as yours. Well, listen, sweet. If you think that's good, then something's wrong with you. Because See, your energy is bad. I'm, I'm speaking respect. Your energy, energy is bad. Three. Yeah, because I just don't rock with you. And that's why? okay. But why? Because I don't. You're why? messy. You're two-faced. You, you are. You are. You are. You don't know what friendship you is. You don't. You're a backstabber. You, you just invited your friends in the club just three weeks ago. What club was I at, sweet? I haven't been in the club in months. So let's talk about it. Five months ago. I'm tracking that much. Wait. Everything should have started So someone told you. See.
see, let me tell you. Don't need nobody tell. Fact check. Need nobody tell. So someone told you that I was fighting a friend in the club. Well, y'all. Okay, and you believe it. And you believe it. I don't know what to believe. Okay, you know I was gonna drag your ass, so you may be sure that I'll slap a bitch, but I'll never fight any of my friends because I'm not that type of guy. So sit down and think of another lie. Sure, you spread a lot of them last year. I ain't spread none of them. Sit down. Your eyelashes are cute. I ain't got no lashes on you. Your eyes are. Sit down. Oh, girl. Tonight is the pajama party, not the grasping at straws by George party. Child, every time George trying to give me a read, I ain't doing nothing but laughing at his ass and just letting him know how many punchlines he's not landing right now. I am some of a, you know, public figure here in the city, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as you know, mm -hmm. what do I know? I have a legitimate corporate careers. Yeah, you do. The Nets, right? so I don't know sweet. if it's multiple, but you got okay. at least one of them. Okay, well, you know what's going on. So, Shirley Sweets. Uh-huh, Okay, Shirley. and I am a, I have a, 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 a title. Yes, okay. uh -huh. So, Shirley, I'm very cognizant when I'm in public. I'm sure right? you are. Mm -hmm. So, besides the time I was going to drag your ass, mm -hmm. if someone came to you and said I was getting to you. really wanted to drag me that night, you, you uh, had Baby, let's be clear. Because I know the type of person you are. Go ahead, girl. Finish the statement. Go ahead, go ahead. It's all right. You're so used to trying to leave sad. I do it well because you're still let me, here. Let me just say it. Go well, ahead. bitch, I'm here because I came to clear you this season. So you didn't clear me yet because you're still here. Because <laughs> I came to clear you. Like I did it. As you try to clear me, my numbers go up, bitch. Mm -hmm. Continue. How's your new show going? Great. <laughs> well, I didn't see the lights, the scribe, and the comment. But anyway. Oh, at least, yeah. But you, what you did see was the project. Down. You're helping Sit me down. again. Sit down. Continue, girl. Sit down. I'm, I'm fin too. Uh -huh. And I'm happy you know that I'm a help uh -huh. to you. You and are. Without me, a you help. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, let me Without say you what? Recently, now, that was the read to everybody else in the room. Exactly. Recently, <laughs> recently, there wasn't a read. There wasn't a read. Oh, what are you talking about? Being a, being a read, I'm sorry, bitch. Fred. I'm lead. Lead, bitch. So, Risa, let me just say this to you. Go ahead, child. This is some from the most. The Here comes another part. read. Come on, girl. No, I would never read you. Come on, girl. Say it, child. Come on. So, listen, Risa. Come on, child. I would never shade you in a sober mind. But I just want you to know. Mm -hmm. That if someone came to you and said that I was arguing or fighting with anyone in the club, you should have questioned that. But instead, what you did was you brought that information back. You just made yourself like a fool because it's a complete lie. And let me hold on one second before you, you know, let okay. us okay. hear Come you on. and smell you. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing mm -hmm. I haven't been out in months in a club environment. Okay. So that factual, whoever told you that, you should have fact checked. And we know you don't do a I lot. I would like to fact check it with you, but you, you know, you, you know, don't fuck with you like that, and that's okay. And you okay. don't know why. <laughs> I do know why. You don't. That's where the delusional piece come in with you. Yeah, exactly. Because, because I feel you don't like know why. You don't understand what There's you've done. There's not a problem, to George. Do you know it ain't no it's problem? It's not no problem. problem. Right. But the reason I don't fuck with you because what you have done to not only me but other people. And like I'm not what? wishy washy. Like what? I'm not reset. Like what? I'm not fifth grade bitch, and this ain't the big red dog. You don't play with me. Trying to say the whole thing is. Picking up on that whole set up the fight thing with y'all and everything. I didn't even up. bring that up in that. That's, that's what she was clear. trying to pick on because that's what she tried to do. She, you know, after the video. You see why I say delusional? You, you, see why I say, you see why I say delusional? I have never even talked about this fight besides when it was asked on this that platform. That was the point I was just trying to make. What girl. the fuck you bring it up for? Bitch, you drinking? Because that's what you just alluded to. What you should say? Girl, 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 just like you. Mark, yeah, you know what? We may have had a little problem, but you know, I just live for your ass. You, you, you know how to fuck with you and like, you know how you fake and act like she went to counseling last year with me and you ignoring had to drop her. Me ignoring her, <laughs> in the, drop top the promise is going to go in on both of us separately and we're going to run a number. We're going to make listen. sure that all your commercials are speaking to you are right on the truth. of Chase Down 63, everything else. I'm going to do that for you because your friend's showing you. You can't do shit for him. Your friend, actually, I can do a lot more. And then I am for you. Something. I believe this platform and whatever. Let's be I would clear. like for you to do so. But guess what? I'm not. What? But let's be clear what I said. Why didn't you just prove my point again, Why? bitch? I'm going to read your ass. Read it. So what people hey, ask me is, is what hey. people ask me is, what's hey. the problem with you and, and you? And you say, you don't have a problem. I say, I don't have a problem with exactly. you. Because you don't have a problem. But I'm not saying, oh my God. Okay. You don't like him. He don't know. Y'all don't know. So that's why they fell in the tail. No one cares. No one cares. I'm not here. This is not fun anymore. We gotta change something. It's beginning to get repetitive, redundant. I'm over it. Like, 
I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of talking about this shit. Fuck this shit. Hey, niggas. The funny thing everybody is. Everybody fucking DM. The funny thing and is. And I'm seeing the DMs. You're thirsty, girl. I'm not You're thirsty. Th yes, you are. I'm not thirsty. You go for every nigga that don't want ain't you. Ain't nobody. You yeah. ask the bitches to be your boyfriend on the show, you go pay them some of your little money from the show. Mm, girl, shut the fuck up. That. Shut the fuck up. Sit back and put your seatbelt on. Stand the child's place. I would never pay a nigga now. Stand up. Well, you been buying them. How? You buy bitches tubs, you get bitches hair done. Child, that's called being chivalrous and that's called you're 14. You yeah. don't know nothing about that. That bitch is delusional if she thought her and Trey had something seriously going on. We ain't gonna talk right. about it. Who's show, man? You just, you just wanted something going on with him, child. I don't know, Trey. Right. When well, you tried to get bitch, I was already there. All right. All right. All right. That's the last time I planned some shit for y'all, bitch. Let's try and make an effort. All right. It was a great party, y'all. It was amazing. Okay. And what we realized today, people gonna be the same. Just round it. And new perfume. <laughs> <laughs>
really shit the track is at this point sounding like it's a vibe so bitch where have you been because you know we had a whole pajama party you wasn't there friend i've been trying to stay you know just listen if things have been so positive i've been making I don't want to say what I've been making, but I've been doing real good. Making moves, baby. Daily, yeah. actually. Not oh. even fucking weekly, but daily. Good. It'd be like, girl, really? Mm hmm So, I don't know. Just a lot of that shit I be wanting to miss out on. I feel, I feel you. Know, it, I kind of missed out on a couple of things that happened at night, too. You could almost tell that it's going to be like, negative. Just Yeah, so it's like, I just, I'm just wanting this kind of sitting... Like this little positive space that I'm in right now. At least just for a little bit, bitch. Like, I know it'll fade soon, but you gotcha. know when it do, bitch. I'll come back around to the food business <laughs> right now, bitch. I don't care to listen to them girls screaming and yell at each other. I don't. Well, that's fair, because that's all that happened. I'm sure so you didn't miss. Whatever happened. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you, didn't miss, you missed nothing. Bitch, what's new? I got to meet Dre Sumber. Uh, is that his name? Dre Sumber. I think that's his name, yeah. It's Dre Sumber. <laughs> Not Dre Sumber. I got it now. It's Dre Sumber. <laughs> but yeah, I got to meet him. I got to meet, well, I met Eric James already, because of the past. Of we, you know, with us, um, but yeah, everything went good until they got into it with everybody. You know, everybody. What but happened? I think, if I'm not mistaken, Eric James got into it with Drake Samba. They got into Again? it. Mm -hmm. Why? Do we ever know why they get into it? See, that's why they want to go to that shit. Yeah, that, it just seemed like I already knew it was just to be some bullshit. Oh yeah, Chad, I be remember shit. Nothing. I be trying to. Do <laughs> so the other day, I, did you know Reese invited me to his home, bitch? Oh really? The bitch, I got you invited been to, to the, the chateau. I've been to the chateau, but just cute too. Yeah. Uh, uh, he cooked for me. It was me, uh, Dior, Robert. A uh, Robert was there. Uh huh. Robert brought a boo thing too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was real cute. I thought you were gonna be there, but you know. I was in that place. That's right. That's right. The name for myself. Yeah. Cause you bitches can never. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> when are we supposed to get together? Cause she sent me an invite to um, Las Vegas. Oh yes. Is that? I mean, is that the next time we're supposed to see each other? I think so, you friend. Think you gonna? gonna be tension? I hope so. So outside of Vegas, I do think that Robert came uh, said he had something on the Fourth of July, like a barbecue. Okay. Oh, so, oh, cute. I bitch, I love me some. I love well, me save me a plate because I ain't gonna be able to make it. But you I know, love me a good link basket. Now. Mm. Hope you know. Hopefully, it's just a good There'll basket. There'll be lots of links in attendance. Okay. Love me a good link basket. <laughs> bitch, you stupid. <laughs> Maybe this one they'll be the girls. Will get, I get to ask the question. I think he's trying to invite everybody too, and I'll be everybody, even Eric. Was even Eric, Eric and Robert was Robert at the party. Because mm -mm. I, I don't think they, wasn't at the party. I think he was going to. Nope. Eric said that he went to the pen. He came from the pen or whatever it was. was and saying. I think that's why he wanted everybody. <laughs> Girl, I don't think Eric going to show up. I really just feel like Eric is picking at uh, Dre because he's so much smaller. That makes sense. So, um, outside of that, we're going to Atlanta for a month just kind of like get ready for a show. Okay. But right after we get back, we kind of want to throw a. Uh, when are you going to Atlanta? We have a show in Atlanta, uh, yeah. uh, June 15th. Oh, yeah, driving up. Driving. Driving. I want to go. Come on. My sister's out there, so I need to be for her, too. Come on. That would be amazing. The more, at this point, the more. Okay. Bitch, and you, look, I'm just going to tell you this, bitch, before I head up out of here, bitch. You keep going, bitch. Yeah. Whatever dreams you got going, this music, follow it, bitch. Add it to the list. This, I, I will. Okay. So, everything is said and done. Carrie has told me, you know, the shenanigans from the motherfucking lingerie set. I'm getting ready to head on up out of here and, you know, get my pen and paper together and figure out this new, you know, career that I'm trying to go into and figure out what it is I need to be writing about and put some more of my motherfucking problems on the pad. So, see y'all. I love you, babe. All right, love, love y'all. Thank y'all again. You're awesome. Girl, bye. 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 <laughs>
So, we have episode eight of Chasing Reality, Chasing Dallas. I love my babies there. I took some notes. So we're gonna keep this real, real, real cute and cute and sweet like, okay? So getting right into it, Reese, M team looks good on you. Keep doing it. Um, it's a good look, you know, TikTok, you're gonna have to figure out something to do here. And so I'm glad that you are taking your brand and going into other areas, you need to do that. Um, Trey Howard and Eric, I was really happy for the conversation that you had. It was probably one of the most cringiest conversations I've ever seen in my life, but I'm glad that you had it. Um, Trey, you've shown that you've grown. I love that you own your part of things that you um, took part in, even like, you know, saying things like the bouffant or whatever that word was. I'm glad that you did that. Eric, I wish you'd be more vulnerable. I, I think that there's so much more that you will find in this life that you will be able to enjoy to the fullest if you just be vulnerable. Um, you've had a cringy conversation with me before, you know, so I get it. Um, I don't think anybody's really coming for you. I think that you have a guard up that you're afraid to let down. That's all I see. Okay, um, Reese and Trey Womack. What, no, okay, first of all, Trey Womack, I'm so glad to see you again. It's been a while, okay? I'm glad to see you back. Um, what's going on with y'all? Why, why we gotta reach back into a, a previous season to pull back some drama? I don't know. And I don't know where all this is going, but one thing that I can say is this. It is the shaming of relationships for me. And a lot of you wonder why you can't find love and why you're always single. Your ego is too involved in how you judge other people's relationships and how you live your own. Everybody's too worried about everybody else's bedroom, so you're afraid to say that you like somebody unless you look like a fool in front of everybody else. Get your ego together. Last thing I want to talk about is uh, Dior. Dior. And this kind of brings me on home. For Dior, I felt those tears. I felt those tears. I've cried those tears. I understand what that's like. And that's why I keep telling you guys that the true drama is in your real lives. All this other stuff, what what George and Reese, I'm, I'm so bored with that, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm bored. The real drama is in your life. And I'm going back to Eric and other ones. If, um, even Joel Tomborough, the, 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 the career that you want to have is going to be found when you take down your mask. That's what, even why this show is, is going up in flames right now because people don't want to take down their masks. And when you don't want to do that, and everybody has their heart on your sleeve, and you're being emotional about everything, you miss out on opportunities to make magic. There's no reason the show should be ending. But ego is a problem. And that's a problem that's on the show too. Hope you get us together. Hope you buy my product. I'm, listen, I'm, I got my ego in check. I got a whole business now. I sell things. So you know it's time to be calm. I got Tumblr. I'm wearing one of my lip glosses right now I got. Fans. Listen, I made the most of this, this situation. A lot of people say, oh, Imani, it looks like you've changed a little bit. Damn right. I got to change. You got to keep growing. got to keep evolving. That's my whole purpose for being here on this show is to teach you how to become and to evolve by fixing your shit. Keep doing it. I love you guys, and I'll see you later, okay? Bye, babies. Let the ships fall where they may. I love you and I trust you, Sierra. Bye. <laughs>
Listen, y'all, my friend is doing the thing. My friend is doing all the things. He's being booked, he's being endorsed, eyeglasses. So I'm here to support all the things that George got going on. So thank you for inviting me. So I am here. Now, now what y'all did see is that George was not on time. He was not. I was outside in his heat with Dior. George, we got to do better. Thank y'all so much for stopping by with y'all just out. I came to get some free frames. Ain't nothing free. And I came in bed. We can buy some. And our code think... didn't work. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go with that shit. Have y'all met a Chris before? No. Are y'all from here in the city? Chris, these are my good friends. This is Dior. And this is uh, Markel. Okay. This is the photographer. So if you need some services, you know, snap. And, you know, actually entrepreneur, actually. So, you know, listen, I have been wearing the Zilu brand for quite some time now. And in fact, you know, I posted a picture that went viral uh, with the brand. And so that's kind of how we got here where I am today. And so that is literally how that endorsement happened. It was just a move of God. What you want to At the top part? I mean, the thing? Um... I was only upset for two reasons. One reason, I felt like I couldn't get out of what I wanted to say. There was right. so much fucking chaos. I was nothing, like, nothing I, I was like, you know what, just talk. Y'all just, y'all just nothing to sit there. And then with Dre Simber, that was a lost cause. You, do you, do you think I was? <laughs> you came in ready. Well, no, I was just trying to give up, you know. Did you have something? Uh, okay, so when we first sat down, and Dre Simmer was right there, you was right there, and Dre Simmer asked you something, you gave him so much shade. Was that he asked me something? Yes, and I couldn't tell if- He said something to me? Yes. Did I respond back? Yes, in a very shady way. But I was like, I think he was trying, he was giving that energy to Eric. Yeah, it was really to Eric and Dre Simber, but I had I already spoke to Dre Simber like prior to that at the club or whatever. Uh -huh. And I was just like letting him know like, why you got um, so much stuff to say about me when I'm not around, but when I'm around you, you act like you don't see me. And he was all apologetic, apologizing, all that. So I thought it was cool, but I just felt like it was gonna happen at the end, as soon as I'm not around. So when I got there, I saw both of them there, so I had to make sure, look, before I get drunk, say what you gotta say now, so I can think on my level, mind, like, you know, think straight, instead right. of go straight to beating me. Yeah. I just knew it was gonna be a shit show. As soon as <laughs> your son came up with the drink names and the questions, and the questions, I was like, well, "You didn't have nothing to do with it." No, I was there when the questions <laughs> came. Out, though. I ain't lying. Nothing to do with that. Oh well. I'm so serious. Uh, what the hell y'all talking about? <laughs> oh, this is nice. Was it? No. Get back, you know, we just trying to figure out if you want to make it. I won't fly in on Thursday. I'll fly in on Friday. So that's okay. my plan. Is that the original date? I know. Not that the original. Because some, some of y'all leaving Thursday. Thursday. Right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm leaving on Wednesday. I'm leaving on the 14th. You're leaving a day oh, early. Leaving yeah. early. Yeah. You and I'm leaving like a day later. <laughs> well, you know, it is a surprise that you could go find your new little specimen. Wait, what you mean, dude? That ain't none of my business. No, bring your man's ass back You walk it up. So listen, I had to step away because I had work to do. That's what I was here to do. Now, Markel and Dior done came here with this mess and shit. I ain't got no time for any of that. Anyway, you know, standing there in conversation, Dior let me know, you know, he's without a man these days. And you know, I, I feel like I have to be I have to be that friend to encourage him to move on and see what the end go be. Run while it's day for the night is coming. Anyway, they talking about a, uh, you know a trip to Vegas. I'm not here for any of that. Um, we can't get along here in Dallas. Now what the hell I look like booking a flight and a hotel to fly across the world for them or with them? They can't even get along here. What I'm gonna do to get that be by myself? So how you did with so how long has this been? Um, it's been a while it's been a while i know and you remember the first time i saw you by yourself i was like but you didn't say did you get permission <laughs> sign? i saw you and i didn't see him no, they come it's been a while so like but how did you deal with it when you were going through you know um i mean ready to jump I, <laughs> on my damn phone every night 
I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. no I mean, I think that I had moments where I was, you know, lonely. I would call, I would text, we would reach out, we had conversations. But I did have a group of friends, and we just like, they kept my spirits up, and eventually just kind of went away. Okay. It was really, really good to see them in a different light, because the last time I saw them, George is about to get beat up. <laughs> and Markel was looking like dumbfounded. So it's good to see my brother and Markel outside of all the drama. Well, speaking of events, I know Robert is having an event on 4th of July. Like an actual 4th, 4th? Now, the last 4th of, 4th of July, July event we went to, we had hot dogs. So let oh, Robert know. <laughs> I'm like, so let Robert know. Is that what you Don't put this. Well, make sure he don't come. Chili, cheese, shit, fries, burgers, buns, no, steak, potatoes. No, no hot dogs, no pool, no, no chairs. Okay. And no alcohol for Markel. Let me tell you something. If we <laughs> have. I'm sitting there eating my hot dog. I'm like, what the fuck? Now, you just sitting there with Is it everybody? Yes. Is it okay for Robert? I mean, I'm cool with him. Oh, yes. I don't want to walk in and be like, hey, he like. I haven't hey. seen Robert since yeah, yeah, the yeah. lemon squeeze. I saw Robert, uh, he walked the ball. Yeah. Well, was he in the ball? I saw yeah. him in the ball last week. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah he yeah. did walk the ball. Most definitely, yeah. Trey walked the ball, too. Trey who? Walmart. He walked I the ball. I don't know, they was like in suits, I guess his. Executive realness? Oh, I guess so. Hmm. And so they was like, you should walk. I ain't gonna walk. <laughs> I'm like, what that face I, for? <laughs> no, I have never been to a ball, but I just feel like I will go if they started like 9 or 10. Why because it's like after the club. It started, like, we got there at 3 30 and we left at like 6 30. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. But whatever. So you're coming? Yeah. I'll come just as long as it's good with Mr. Rock. I, I like yeah, Rock. Good. I, we call a shopper. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. going to be there, so let's see. How you know, I ain't going to invite nobody in. Yeah. Make sure your chakras are right. Oh, mine. And don't bring good. no bag. Y'all, I have to, we have to go. Mm -hmm. No, I don't rent this space for so many hours. Why don't tell me not to bring no bag. You don't you bring that up. Uh, a little mercy, guy. So what you gonna do is you gonna go out this door and you gonna hang the left. And if you park on the point, you park on the left. We can put it on the other one. been a lot going on and most recently through an email chain between me and Markel I don't like when people think that I'm trying to personally attack them so enough is enough and we need to have a conversation to go ahead and put everything out on the line since he's been wanting to talk to me let's see how this conversation goes so um I have called this meeting today to just kind of, I suppose, get an understanding about everything. Let's go ahead and just nip everything in the bud. Stop I'm tired of hearing things, especially when I'm not looking for the information. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Boys and girls, we are here finally to have this goddamn conversation to hopefully like just not even necessarily like rekindle anything, but just like get an understanding, agree to disagree, respect, and move on and be cordial. That's what we're hoping for. What really prompted this was the email. If I feel like you shouldn't be a part of the show personal attack thing all of that so is that the only thing that you want to discuss are we discussing it? well that's what prompted this this meeting i will say from the jump from it's all the way back to the end of last season mm -hmm. to, the back, to the middle of last season going towards november with ariel's thanksgiving uh drag show thing that we did for the less fortunate, I mean, for, for the little kids. At that moment, I spoke about something about you and Trey Womack, with Trey Howard, Ariel, and Dior. From that moment, 
from my understanding what was told to me, from that moment, that's when things changed with you for me. I mean, you towards me. Who told you that? Cameron. Okay. Can't believe nothing Cameron say unless it come from me. Go so ahead. like the conversation kind of died down. It wasn't like a it wasn't a lot of key can. The vibe was just different. Whether you said it or not. The vibe was just different, I caught it. Reached out a few times, things things were just off. So when months went by, before the reunion and all that good stuff, I did go to Grapevine. I ran into Cameron and I said, listen, no drama, no nothing. I just got one question. I said, is there an issue between Reese and I that I don't know about? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, he just enlightened me. And then he said, it's all about the whole trade woman conversation. And then at that moment, I reached out to you and just said, hey, if there's anything that I ever said, I did, you know, it wasn't meant that way, blah, blah, blah. Never got a response. Another producer who's no longer on Atlanta created a, a show, right? That was back in March or April. I watched it. I said, you know, it's a little different. It's missing something. Him and Travis was on live. And I said, no. Oh. And he was like, maybe we should branch off and do a Dallas. That's what Travis said. And then Travis said, maybe Reese should produce it. And then the other producer said no and clicked off the live. And the live ended. I DM Travis myself. And I said, hey, what do you, I said, do you think that he would be open to having something in Dallas? He was like, yeah, reach out to him. So I put up a whole little mock-up treatment about how I think the show should be in Dallas. Sent it to him, he responded, and then like he blocked me. For some reason, I don't know. We didn't have no, too much of a back and forth. He blocked me. So then I'm, as I'm sitting at home, talking to my boyfriend, I said, like, okay, he blocked me. Then he's like, well, maybe you should change it up. Maybe you should add this. Maybe you should do the friends and do this and all, and all this. And he's like, and maybe you should call it, call it Lovers and Friends and actually use the song with Usher in it. And I said, huh, that's a good idea. I said, and we can make this and make this and make, make a few changes. Added Raymond and Premiere. Mocked it up, sent the email to Indario, our DM, some, some, some type of communication. I said, hey, I know you're gonna be down here for the reunion. Can we have a conversation? Because um, I have an opportunity, something I wanna do. He was like, yeah. We had the reunion, there were some moments. At the end, you were emotional. I still, at, at that moment, at the reunion, we, we didn't clear anything up because you didn't wanna talk about it. So I was still kind of left with, I know what Cameron said, but I want to hear it from you so I know if this is exactly what it is. And I didn't get it at that moment. The next day, or maybe the day after, I made a, I came, came to the place, showed him Derry of the project. He didn't quite understand it a little bit, so I asked him a lot of questions, like, well, how many days does that he really get it? And then you came, he's like, oh, that's a cute idea, it's this and that. And I said, yeah, it's blah, 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 blah. Then he, then he got it. You sat in the chair over there, TV was there, and Dario was right here. I was behind the couch. We watching YouTube videos, calculating, having a good time, watching some other web series, having our own commentary. After that, he asked, Reese, are you gonna be a part of this project? Omar Kell, do you want Reese to be a part of this project? Somewhere in that realm. I was like, yeah, if you wanna be, I said, you can have whatever title. You say, you didn't wanna be EP or something, you'll be okay with producer, something in that realm. I said, okay, fine. We gonna work together. We went downstairs, we had our private conversation, and that was the first time you actually opened up and told me how you were feeling, what happened, um, why you were upset, or why you felt like I distrust you, or I, I brought something to you where you couldn't trust me anymore. And I gave you my reason why or what transpired, and I thought we had an understanding People came by, laughed and calculated. I thought we cleared the air. I thought everything was good. We're gonna start. That's not necessarily fresh. We're just gonna pick up. That was in May. Um, June rolls around. It was my birthday. I went to Arizona for my birthday. At that moment, I had time to think about it. I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to do something on my own. Ever since after high school, I just always wanted to do it on my own. Just finally say, I did this myself. So at the airport coming back on June 10th, the day after my birthday, 
and there your ass. He was like, no, he called me and said, all right, I'm gonna give you the green light, good to go. Is Reese still gonna be a part of this project? I said, no, I'm not gonna have a, project, a part of this project because I, 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 there's no issues there. I just, want, I just want to do this myself. I just want to see, can, can I complete something on my own? He said, okay, that was it. I didn't have a conversation with you. I didn't call you, I didn't text you and say that you're not gonna be a part of that project. That was bad of me. As, as far as, as a friend at that moment and a professional, I didn't call you or text you and say, hey, I don't want you to this project, blah, blah, blah. You reached out to me and you said, hey, I'm about to start two or three new projects. I said, congratulations on your new projects. You know, do you still need my help or do you still want me or some, something in that room? And then my response was, I was like, no, I think I'm going to go ahead and take the ranks on this. I, I want our, our friendship not to be about shows. And you said, that's a great idea, or I like that, something like that. And I thought, you know, I thought from there everything was okay. Like, I thought everything was okay. If you felt some kind of way from that, I didn't know. You never reached out to me, anything like that. So we did meet up a few times around where you was doing the retreat. We went to Kona Grill, 77 Degrees. You know, we hung out minimum times and then then I started to get really knee deep into the show and like yourself when you need when you knee deep when, when, when it's your first go around or even second you're busy you just you just overlook things you're not really cognizant of like you know what I haven't talked to him today I haven't called him today because you just you're doing this yourself in essence I did it my I was doing it myself my boyfriend helped me on maybe two or three scenes everything else I did it all myself and I just was not focused on friendships. It wasn't until you did that interview with, I can't think of his name, you alluded to there's a new show coming out that you, um, you didn't say it directly that I stole it or took your idea. You said like, you put the, you put the bug in the ear, like you kind of, you had something to do with it. You, you, you put that rim in there. And it was, a, it, was, it was two times you did that. And I was just like, are you putting the narrative, the narrative out there that I stole this idea from you? Which, which I didn't. Yes, we had a conversation at Gloria's. You said, hey, I wanna do a, 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 Reese, I mean, a, a, a dating show called Reese G. Finds Love. You showed me the mock-up, I mean, not the mock-up, the, the opening. First thing I said was, why am I called to help? And he's like, no, he's going to change that. You know, he was just working around, just, just playing with it. And, and Premier was there. We had a few conversations, like, right then and there about it. And we started talking about all kinds of other things. But we never came back to discuss anything else about it. And to be honest with you, I don't even really remember that full conversation. I don't remember it was being a full concept of saying, this was the opening, the end, the middle, anything like that. So when I had that interview with Imani, I was very clear about when the show was being created, it was a thought about the other show that was in Atlanta and I talked to my boyfriend and came together. Because we haven't even spoken, I wasn't thinking about a conversation that we had in the past. So I wasn't biting your idea or taking what you had or trying to make something alive of what you said. It was nothing like that. You, a thought of you in our conversation, nowhere near in my forefront. And that's always been my same story. It's like, I wasn't even thinking about you. Not in a shade, but I just, I wasn't thinking about you. But I was just creating and nothing to do with you. So when the narrative, narrative kept coming back from multiple people, like you stole it, you stole it, okay, you stole it. I'm like, no, I didn't. That's just not how it happened. And I think that with time, in my mind, with time, you got over the idea that a little bit, that I possibly took this idea from you, but I think that you was possibly more hurt or felt some kind of way that I didn't want to work with you on the project. And there, there wasn't a follow up with rebuilding the friendship. And I can take a fault on that because that is true. But I think from that, because of my experience with you from the first two seasons of us being 
just behind the scenes, kicking it out. Any and everything that's going on with the show behind the scenes, what's being said, what's what's not. That how I how I was kicking and laughing with you. Now I'm that person, and that's how I feel. So when things are being submitted or something, I feel like I'm getting I'm getting a a bad or even if you think you're being professional, for me it feels like you are coming after me. Are you attacking me? Are you trying to make me less than? Or you don't want me, not necessarily you don't want me to be a part of this show, but that you're making me feel as though I am like, okay, he's there. If you want to do it, you know, we'll find time. He's a second thought. When it comes to the personal scenes, the whole thing about the baby and what happened, and you made a comment about you didn't want to re, um, 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 have that part kind of scripted because you you know you didn't want that to be redone or something about about, about that that story being scripted. But that situation had already happened. So regardless, I would, I would have to relive that situation. So that, that part was still going to have to be mocked us some kind of way. She didn't want to be a part of it. She didn't want to relive that. So I can't fault her. I can't make her be like, you know what? We had a miscarriage. I want you to re-talk about that for the world to, to hear. She didn't want to do that. And when it came to my home and, and my personal life, because all of the everything that was going on between you and I, I was like, no. The first two seasons, I gave everything. I gave you my first boyfriend, let you into all my places, did every single thing. Anything you wanted to do, I wanted to do, anybody, I was there. I went late, I did everything. I, I wasn't combative, I didn't do anything. Like, I was there for the project. If something needs to work, we need to do this, get this done, make boom, 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 I'm there. I did it, because I believe in the project. I believe where it's going to go. So when it comes to this, this email about the personal scenes, I've had multiple conversations outside of you with Roger and CJ. The first time was at Green Screens. I said, listen, hey, can we sit down and talk about personal scenes? We'll go ahead and do the house, the dirt, we'll do this, blah, blah, blah. They came in with some ideas, we went back and forth. I said, okay, this, this right here makes sense. This is what we're going to do. We're going to talk to Reese about it. Okay, this is how you need to go ahead and send it in. I said, okay, I sent it in. It didn't really go nowhere from there. Had a second conversation with CJ. And this, this is not throwing about under us because this is not like a drama thing. Had a conversation with CJ when we were doing, me and Trey Howard was talking about uh, planning a uh, pajama party. Sat in my car. Okay, this person's saying, how are we going to do this? Because it seemed like this, this right here is not working. Okay, we need to go ahead and do this. Maybe get George, we can do this. And I was like, you know what? Actually, I said, we can do the dirt. I said, we, we can show where the, the house is going to be. I said, we're going on our cash trip in Vegas anyway. I just make it more personal. I can be FaceTiming my sisters. My twin sisters live in Vegas anyway. So I can give them the update to connect everything together. And then I kind of fell through again, the personal scene after I submitted it. In the last conversation I had with Roger with my last work scene, I said, hey, how can we get this personal scene done? I said, help me get this done. So I've had multiple conversations on, 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 on your team, thinking that this is gonna go in the right direction. And every time I'm talking to your team of which way to go and how to do this, it's, it's getting cut, 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 cut. Not that you say I'm not gonna do it, it's just, it's, just, it's, not, it's not coming out. It's just, it's, it's not working. So when I sent that email, I was like, yeah. I said, I, wait a minute. I just, at this point, I just feel like something ain't right. I feel like it's more of a personal attack I feel like you don't see it for me because of whatever situation that it's just not, I, I feel like at that moment I was like, you know what, if you don't want me to be here, just say it. Just say, you know, Marquette, I don't see it for you no more. You ain't doing nothing. I think we should cut to us. And I will gladly easily just walk away. I'm not going on live, cussing you out, bashing. I'm not, I, I, I don't even do that. I want to interview with Imani. And I had a quite a little shade with you about the about the book. Other than that, I don't do all the extra. It's like if you want to have a conversation, we can have a conversation because I just feel like it's 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 
it's more than just what how surface it is and um, Dre Sember when it comes to him and his comment on the lot on the, the interview that you sent me because I only watched the clip I never went back and, and, and saw it um, whatever you guys were going through at first whatever day that was I was out with my boyfriend all the, all the other stuff he called me I didn't answer I called him back what's going on he just uh, I said well, hold on I'm gonna call you when I leave. I called him later on that night. And he was just going on about how he feels about you, the show, the scenes, everything. And he was just like, it's all about the trade, the world. Like, everybody else in the show except for you, Markel. I know your scenes are not being done. I was like, I was like, no, I just think my personal scenes are not being done. I think they're getting cut. And I said that. I mean, that's just how I feel from everything that, that's transpired. I think that I know we we're going to have a, a differences a differences when it comes to um, opinions and what happens and how you feel. Your feelings are going to be valid. Just like my feelings are how I feel, how I'm being treated is valid. How do we move on from this? I think that's all I have. Okay, what questions do you have for me? I don't have a question. I want you to rebuttal from what I said. Can can you match this from from the beginning portion of um, me having a conversation at Ariel, Ariel's event up into the reunion and us making up after that? Did this I mean, does this story seem like you understand it? Like, yeah, I, I totally get your viewpoint. Totally get your viewpoint. What's your viewpoint? From, for me, the difficulty started with Imani's interview. Okay. All that stuff before that, the whole Trey Womack thing, I stopped talking to Trey in February, right? Wash my hands of the situation. It didn't work. When it comes down to lovers and friends, the idea, pitching gear, all that stuff, I threw my hands up with it. I'm, this, it's not a battle that I wanted to go with. I don't care. You got your show. I was happy that you got your show. And even when things started to happen where your show was going to not make it, I vindicated for you and I rooted for your show. Have the receipts for it, if you'd like to see them. So, as it pertains to that, Lovers and Friends is Lovers and Friends. It's a show that you put out. It's very ironic how we did have conversations, certain things that we talked about just so happened to happen with your show. It happened. You got your show. I hope your show continues. When it comes down to where the problem comes in for me is I don't feel like I should be hearing things as it pertains to me and you from other people, especially when I'm not looking for it. Things that are being said publicly about what you have said, things that I'm seeing, I should not be seeing it. Such as like even the when Dre Simmer went live and there are more things that he said that only he could have gotten from you. That's it. When it comes down to private conversations or professional conversations, and when things are put out, that's a problem for me. Private conversations between you and I? Professional. I didn't mean to say private. Email conversations, because we don't talk. So when, when things happen via email that we discuss, I don't believe that it should leave the email. When I hear... The reason, let's let me back up. The reason why I detach from you is because I feel like you did, you've been doing too much when I'm not bothering you. For me, when you went live with Imani, I was taken aback that I was even brought up. I hadn't talked to you. I made an effort to fix the problem that I messed, the situation that I messed up with our friendship. Are you okay with me asking you questions in between what you were mm -hmm, Go ahead. So when you say the, the, Imani interview, you realize that was after you've done your interview, so I had to vindicate my story about the show. Because I wasn't, 
because Imani would have never asked me about stealing the show from you. She said that after you brought it up. You brought it up voluntarily. I said what? Oh, and just to clear the air, that's how you started it. Because of what? She didn't say yeah. anything prior to, no, no, though. No, I'm saying, but because of the other interviews that you have done. But I never said that. Never what said I said what? what I said was, is that there's a new show coming of an idea that we talked about, because we had more conversations, even prior to when I sent you the opening that Andario did, you were at work. And then you called me about it while you were at work. And so when that whole thing happened, the conversation at Gloria's just so happened to happen. It wasn't even a planned thing. I'm not going to go back and forth about that. When it comes down to the Imani thing, you volunteered that information. You brought it up. She never said anything about it because she didn't know anything about it. And so what what I feel like you did was you want to jump ahead of a situation that you thought was coming. You had... No. That, I'm just telling you how I feel. Okay, I'm just telling you how I feel. Okay, so you wanted to jump ahead of this idea of me publicly saying Markel stole my show. You were insinuating that prior. Even though you didn't say verbatim, Markel stole my show. Because you didn't say that verbatim does not mean you're not insinuating that that is what you're saying. And that's if what you I, perceive... And that, no, but that's what I took from that. Okay. So when I got to Imani, I'm vindicating myself because... It was two times you did that. I was just like, you may not be saying that directly. Like, Markel, you stole this. But you're insinuating it. And to me, it's the same thing. You're just not saying it verbatim. Did I say your name? Reason, you know you're talking about me, though. And you know you were talking about me. I know you were talking about me. Did there I say no your name, though? Show. There's no other show. Does not matter? Did I, did I say it does matter? Reese, that's like me going to an interview right now and saying, there is this producer out there, you know, that has something. Um, he don't really care for me. I'm insinuating. You know I'm talking about you. You know I'm talking about you. Not everybody else. You know I am. And I know that you know that I'm talking about you. I know you were talking about me. You know you were. Can you yeah, just, can I, you definitely, I definitely right. was, yeah. Right, so I knew but what I said, you. But what I said was that this. I took that from what you. I said during the interview was I was asked the question about what's going on. I said, there's somebody on Chase and Dallas that's actually bringing a show. It was an idea that me and Andario thought about, and he's actually taking it, and he's, he's making it happen. That's the same tone I said and everything. So if you felt from that tone yeah, and from what I tone. said... You had a condescending tone, very much. Very much you took it as condescending. But like you normally do. You have Listen. That thing when you smile, you're like, you know, there's another cast member out there. It's a good show that, you know, I mean... And I, it, that's what you took from Doing me. a show that me and Andario came up with, you know... <laughs> You know, it's, it's similar to what, you know, and you have the insinuating look, the condescending sound. If you would have said it I just purposely, like you said it right I then, did say it that way, and I purposely made sure that I said it that way so this wouldn't be what happened. But it did anyway, which then triggered you to say what you said on Imani. It's okay to defend yourself or jump ahead something because you saw my past actions. That's what that was. I just, That's totally fine. I just wish you would be on the interview and he said, what's coming up new or what you got going on? There's this new show that, that is coming on Chasing Reality. We stay tuned. It's the extraness that, that you said. Even if it was nice. I don't even care if it was extra or not. I'm going to always try and make anything coming out of Dallas look great. And that was something that looked great. Because it was an idea that me and Andario came up with. So I thought, I'm going to take what you said that you did with your boyfriend as truth. I don't really 100% believe that, but true. I'm going to take it as truth. So if somebody coming from over here, just like Joy said at the Lemon Squeeze, when I should be proud and all this shit, I'm not going to because I know what you have been working towards. I know what you have been wanting to do. You forget that we have had conversations, so I know exactly where you have been and wanted to go. So I would never try and take a show from you or try to bash you in reference to that. I got receipts to prove that, just so you know. I don't care that you have a show, but what I did care about is that it was not, you wouldn't get the opportunity to do your show. Re know that, okay? When I said what I said on Hype Man's interview, it was not supposed to be taken the way you took it. But I can't fault you for the way that you feel and how you took it. What I would have liked for you to do, because we were on, you took that as a shot, you should have just hit me up and said something. You didn't. Okay. It festered. You did an interview with Imani. You said what you said. 
And at that time, I was just like, wow, okay. And then everything else that you said is similar to, the, is, is what you are telling me now as far as how the idea came about. And as I was watching it with somebody else, when I watched it in post to see the full thing, me and the other person did not agree with what was coming out of your mouth. So I looked at it as this nigga stole my show. But, or actually a show that we were going to do. Because I never 100% said it was mine. It was something we were going to do together. Didn't care. When it came up and when the questions started coming out, I'm going to answer the questions. It's the business. I'm going to be truthful. And I'm going to answer the questions. Cool. When it came out, when you, when it came out at the front of the damn show, created by <laughs> Markel Logan. I was like, well, damn, that's a big ass shot wow. because, well, you did create it. You sure did. I mean, I, okay, but I did create it. You did I create didn't put it. That there. Uh, okay. But you the but, EP of it so you can control what go well. Okay. So when I saw that, I was like, well, damn, feelings hurt. Move on. I got other shit I got to worry about. Cool. Never said nothing about it. If shit is coming back to you, check them. Don't feel bad at me. Check them. Because they bring shit to you and I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's what's been happening. Now, for me... But Risa, how, how, how can you sit here and say, if things are coming back to me, that maybe you are saying, are you, are you that dead? Why should I check them when you're not checking the people who are saying something that you think that I said? Nobody said anything. You just said earlier that things are coming back to you. Well, things publicly. Are- I'm seeing it publicly is what I'm saying. These right. things are coming up from what Dre Simber is saying. It's just random shit that's coming up. Nobody is bringing things to me. People ha- are challenging my character with finding out about me. And then they're saying, you know, Reese, this is not even, you know, people have said stuff and this is not even you. I'm just like, okay, well, what have you heard? And it points back to you. That's what I'm saying. I think that it's a known fact maybe not the public maybe not but in this core rim that we're in when someone is your friend or when someone is in good graces with you or you have no issues with that person or nothing they get nothing i mean they get nothing wrong when it comes to the show they want to submit something if it's in the right time whatever it everything is is, is flowing but when you don't see it for that person, for whatever reason, you do have a personal part in you that hinders you. I understand that you say that you can separate it, but there are moments where that personal side of you affect your judgment sometimes. When it comes to people who you don't care for, it has definitely happened to me. And no, it, it hasn't. It, it because if that, if, that was, if that was the truth, then I would not have made sure that I got up by myself to film everybody's green screens to close out season two, especially the people I did not like. If I had a personal feeling towards them, especially George, I fed him everything for his green screens last year. And it's very tough working with him. For example, to be very clear, when it comes down to us personally, I don't think about us personally anymore because I don't feel that I can trust you. At the end of the day, because all the back and forth, but at the end of the day, when I first met you, first met you, wasn't even about the show. You were at OT Tavern, sent us out on patio, and I walked up to you. I said, hey, what's your name? You said Reese, I said Marquette, we're from Atlanta. Boom, it was a connection right then and there. Nothing to do, nothing. I didn't, I, I didn't know who you were. I was starting something, something with you then. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about nothing else. Mm-hmm. You, were, you were my friend. There were conversations that you and I had that was personal. This whole mess has gotten out of hand to the point where now it's just like, we're just washing our hands. And if that's just the way the world works, then just, then it's fine. That's just how I have to live with it. But I don't want, when we leaving out right here, our friendship at that time was real. 
it was so much separation of, of, of time where people grow and change and so much back and forth, just so much mess. Everybody had their own opinions and thoughts all mixed into it. It's it probably stuff you didn't say, I didn't say, but people, well, I think. And because we're not seeing eye to eye, he said it, he said it. But because of that, The moments that I, I, I vented to everybody else, like, I do miss this friendship. So when I pulled you outside, it was genuine. And I didn't want to jump it because we were already on a thin line. Very thin. So when I reached out to him, it was nothing about, like, I didn't know you. But we haven't talked in a very long time. And I want to make sure I was doing this the right way. I don't have a want to bring you up because of this lost friendship, this, um, the back and forth and all of that. So I just avoid the conversations altogether. I would even go as far to say, at this point to avoid this, these feelings, what I'm feeling, I will almost go off on anybody that brings you up to me outside of this show at this point because I don't need this in particular. So, I think that from, from right now, I think that we have some type of understanding and I will make a, a, a effort to make sure that it's not awkward when we see each other, when we're in the same rooms together. I've been doing my best to do that. You got a lot of stuff going on. I want you to be happy, regardless of anything. Just be happy. Be happy with your life, your shows, your family, career, everything. Just be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about a lot. He said a lot, I said a lot. You know, a lot of things we need to keep to ourselves because y'all don't need to be in our goddamn business, okay? And um, I think that we came to an agreement that, you know, we're just going to be cordial. You don't say nothing about me. I'm not gonna say nothing about you. Um, no conversations about it. We shake hands and we move on. We're done. Are you a business owner that wants to expand your business? Are you thinking of starting a business? got more than 300 followers on social media, and you are looking for passive income from your influence, make sure you go right on over to hbmarketplace.com. They have some vendor lists for you that are like no other. I trust their vendor lists, and I want you to do the same. hbmarketplace.com is most definitely the place you need to go to figure out things such as drop shipment, getting personalized label for your products as an influencer, and even how to get your products in big retailers like Walmart and Amazon. Make sure you go right on over to www.hbbmarketplace.com and further your business journey today. Too many times we've participated in our diversity and inclusion workshop and we went there and we were just told a whole bunch of stuff you tell little kids when they go to elementary school. Treat others how you want to be treated and we only one race, the human race. But if you come to my workshop, we're going to have a real crucial conversation where we disrupt comfort zones because we know that racism, classism, ableism, and all the isms that literally kept at bay by having a comfort zone. When you tap in at georgeleespeaks.com, just know I'm gonna come there to literally problematize and disrupt the comfort zone that keep all these issues in the workplace at bay. It started as a dream. Then I woke up and turned it into a reality. Reflections of me, the circle of confusion, and pages out of my journal are all three books written on hard times in my life. But that didn't stop a boy like me. I decided to use my voice. And I created three radio shows. And the newest solo show, All About Mike, Let's Talk About It, is where I talk all my shit and give zero fucks. Being on my hot boy shit led me to create the Michael Collection. With shirts of my favorite sayings 
And as you can see, you should definitely trust no hoe. What happened to all be dreams of mine? I turned them into reality. And with that, I walk into my new journey where I'm really about to fuck shit up and go beyond zero fucks given in these LA streets. How that happened to me. I need you to pay me. So don't let nobody take advantage of you. Some if a celebrity wants you to do their hair, they need to pay you. So to be careful what you ask for. Yeah. Because you just might get it. The first thing my mind went to was like, is he dead? Uh -oh. You don't even live here. I'm gonna get that bag. 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 So today my hot new single ended up releasing called Run It Up again. Check me out on all streaming platforms. That's all streaming and any streaming platforms. You know, the kids decided to come out and support me. I'm getting to meet Dee Dee today, which is really exciting. And Jeremy's here and um also, Robert is here, and Reese and, and King, as well as Trey, and his boyfriend, too. It's so nice to have so many different people. So I'm going to invite them over to the pool and, you know, change my clothes and have a little pool time with them. So my single just dropped today. Yes. 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 Oh I've been God. bumping it all day. Have you really? And my car on repeat. I'm happy back in Dallas. I ain't seen y'all since. Oh, and that went to mm. shit. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just start there. This girl had a PowerPoint ready to just slide. I was having an Annalise Keating moment. Like, I wanted to bring everybody around okay. who liked me and who didn't like me so I could see who you are, so I can know how to deal with you according. And Absolutely. you see, I really don't want no problems. I'm getting no. older and getting richer. Okay, I push through. And you know, really I just want to surround myself with people that's like, they like fuck with me. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll even though we had our, our things or whatever, we're all good and we yeah. can move past it, but some people just can't do that. So it's Juneteenth and we are sitting by the pool and we're just sitting here kicking around what's been going on with the group. Obviously there's new shit every day and this one has to be um, just about the things that happened at the pajama party and the things that just been happening recently. You didn't go to the pajama That's party. what I want to know. Oh, me and Robert like, oh, who, you, who are you Yeah, we was both like, uh, I was who are you talking about? Yeah, yeah they acted, they asked. What was in the bed? Drunk. What who was out there? My boxing gloves. Ah! Boxing gloves. Ah! Yeah. The ones you wore to the... Uh, <laughs> you got the boxing gloves. Yeah. Cause I walked in, I walked in, I saw Dre Simber, and I Ooh. saw, and I'm giving by the no, real names today. Who? Dre Simber and Eric, Louis the Light Bulb, and Poo Fonda. And I was like, oh before I get drunk, I won't have to beat no bitch up in this hotel room and leave an incident on him and Markel. I can't so, believe yeah. Both of them was there? Yes, both of them was there. Both of them was there. Both of them was there. That's why I'm ready for that song. Yeah, I know. I, uh, she didn't have shit to say. I was like, you know, it would've been, it would've been. My thing was, my thing was, me and Markel, we did work really hard to try to bring it. No, listen, because me and my girl are really good friends now. You I think he's a, I think so. Because he show blame the whole work is for the event on you. Oh. What do you mean? Oh, Reese, don't oh, start no trouble. Oh, oh, he did oh. not say that. The I have heard some things about the party. Oh, what did you hear about the party? Well, I heard that there were cups that was basically reading Reese down. Uh. Oh wait, all the drinks and as Reese friend. Okay, <laughs> it is kind of fucked up that you. It is kind of fucked up that you had allowed that. Baby. Yeah. Well, I feel like right, Markel right, is like, like he maybe shit. on a, I don't think he used me. I think he's like on an island, obviously. <laughs> well, I actually just had a, a conversation with Markel. Oh, oh really? Oh, really? Yeah. Well, how did they yeah. Everybody, oh, really? Oh, really? Right. We all like I had a conversation with him, and you know, my thing is that he's sticking to his story, and I'm going to respect it. 
but I do feel like with this situation, I do feel like um, he, 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 I feel like he befriended me to get ahead. You know, and then he claimed that I was shading him when I did the uh, interview with Hype Man. And all I said was, there's somebody on the cast that's doing a show that me and I'm very proud of, and he's taking it and making it something. I was being real because I didn't want a problem. Right. We see each other. Right. Said, we ain't got it. We're, I said, I don't want a friendship with you because I can't trust you. Right. For real. And that's it. Like, there's no coming back there. Like, yeah. it wasn't like a, you know, we still, so it was like, you know, and now we brothers and cousins. Right. <laughs> See, I don't really have a relationship with Markel. I really don't. I mean, we speak. Are you his brother? I mean, yeah. Him and George have become really cool Chicago. friends of mine. They helped me out of a flat. Chicago. I had a flat. Uh, yeah, so that I feel like I like between you and George, I heard oh, yeah, the streets be talking. Yeah. Uh-oh. And I heard that uh, what the streets do? he wasn't going to be around for a while. But, I mean, he seems like he was... Around now. Well, all I'm Met, still trying to figure out is that, if, 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 if it was before or after. That explains George Beef know. at the Lemon Squeeze that Reese didn't know about. Because he was mad. Could you like, mess with his we, man? Yeah. Oh! So Reese so was that, like, why are we even beefing? Wait, so has the beef in it all the way? <laughs> like, the you know, I'm just Bro, like, I, I, watch, watch, I just sat back and watched, remember? So as we sitting around talking and shit, you know what I'm saying? It come up that I guess George and Trey Womack, you know what I'm saying? Mr. No Her, um, she had, <laughs> they had something going on. <laughs> That's some weird ass shit. <laughs> That's a weird ass couple days shit, but shit, I'm with it. No judgment zone, you know what I'm saying? But uh, shit, shit looked like to me, him and George been talking. That's where the beef come in with George and Riri. I was wondering where George was beefing with Riri from, but it's because Trey and that nigga been fucking with each other. That shit funny as fuck, bro. <laughs> So I have another performance that I have to end up doing tonight So I'm gonna have to go ahead and escort these girls out and, and also invite them to come out tonight Hopefully they end up showing up I know it's supposed to be a ball going on and Didi is so known for doing the balls and you know such an amazing ending and as well as Robert and Jeremy and they all apparently are in the same house now I'm ending up finding out so you know Shit, hopefully they can show up to see me. If they don't, I completely understand, child. Or if not, hopefully I can get to them. But what I do have to do is hear up and get myself together and get up out of here because I have a whole nother gig to get to. I've been working so much this year, like it is crazy. <laughs> All the bitches that I fuck with is bad. Pretty long nails, big booties getting cash. When these hoes still stay be hating on my ass, cause they niggas looking at us and it's just too fucking bad. Say hyping up my bitch because she pretty. When we link up, make these bitches feel shitty. Walk up in the spot, know these niggas trying to hit it. Bitches always gonna feel it when it's fresh in the building. Everybody know that. You would think I'm just sitting like moonwalk 
talking, all you bitches call me Barbie Bank Jackson. Right? Push, push it to the limit. If she started, bitch, I finish. If you want it, you can get it. Pull up, pussy, let's get with it. Yeah. Bitch, keep talking slick shit on that ground, but I ain't gon' do shit. I dropped the pants up, pull up, bitch, and let's get fucking to it. You think you bad, you talk your shit. I'm with that shit, let's do it. Pull up, little bitch, and bring your click, and let's get fucking to it. Bitches faking bad, but up in person, be straight pussy. Thinking like she ramble on that line, but I ain't gon' do shit. Get checked, little bitch, get murk, little bitch. I know some goons will do it. Shit, let's do it, yeah. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Just like I thought you, you, you bitches fucking pussy. Smashing on these bitches, crushing next and snatching weed. Bitches think they got the crown, I'm that bitches popping now. You can see me on your TV, bitches hate but wanna be me. If you got a problem with me, speak up, bitch, and come and see me, yeah. Bitch keep talking slick shit on that ground, but I ain't gon' do shit. I dropped a pin, so pull up, bitch, and let's get fucking to it. You big, you bad, you talk your shit, I'm with that shit, let's do it. Pull up, little bitch, and bring your click, and let's get fucking to it. Bitch is faking bad, but up in person, be straight pussy. Thinking like she ramble on that line, but I ain't gon' do shit. Get checked, little bitch, get murk, little bitch, I know some goons will do it. Buck up, little bitch, knock up, little bitch, I'm about that shit, let's do it, yeah. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Run it up, run it up. Just like I thought you, you, you bitches fucking pussy. I'm not finna be out here playing in these motherfucking streets with these pussy ass hoes. Bitch, you got me fucked up, bitch. Like, I just got my motherfucking baby hairs laid. Like, bitch, but I will say, bitch, if you try me, I'm gonna snatch you. Let's go. Go here. Y'all ready to turn The phenomenon is Ariel or Hell Monroe. Next time on Chasing Dallas. What I'm saying is, we squashed it. You always yeah, start with something. Yeah, yeah. Do you just, want to know where the post came from or not? Bitch, I don't give a fuck if you get loud because I can get loud too. So, what, what's wrong with y'all? Who? Me and Marquette? Mm -hmm. You allowed the narrative for people to attack me all last year over something that you knew what the fuck. What's going on? Get that narrative out your mind. Bitch, it was shady. You took it as shady. Because we all did. Y'all want me to address these issues when I really had a friendship with this man. I need a bag. I need a bag. I need a bag. Man, give me that bag. Bags under my eyes. Under my what? Can I'm chasing that bag? I'm chasing it. Put it on my mama. Put it on my mama. Put it on my dad. On my dad. Man, I'm packing my bags. Pack it up. I'm gonna get that bag. I'm gonna get that hey, bag. I need a bag. I need a bag. Bag under my eyes. Under my eyes. Cause I'm chasing that bag. I'm chasing it, chasing Put it on my mama. Put it on my mama. Put it on my dad. Man, on my dad. Man, I'm packing my bag. Packing it up. Wanna get that bag? Bag. Yeah.